Hey y'all, my name is Fallout, or so they tell me, and in today's guide I'm going to show you how you can beat the Crota's End raid in D2, even if you're a super beginner and have no experience raiding at all. Just a quick note, almost all the footage you're gonna see was recorded on contest mode where the raid was much harder. Trust me though, don't worry, it'll be way more doable for you and your team now that contest mode is over. Jumping right in, we have a very quick opening encounter that will introduce you to the main mechanic of the raid. You'll need to form a bridge into the Hellmouth in order to fall down into the dark below. One person has to pick up this glowing ball of light, aka the Chalice of Light. This is your primary mechanic throughout the raid. The Chalice of Light will charge up automatically over time on your HUD, and when the charge meter is full, you're gonna have a brief window of time where one of your teammates will have to take the Chalice from you or else you will die. Once a teammate has taken the chalice from you at full charge, you will now have the enlightened buff. Taking the chalice from a teammate before they reach full charge means they will not get the enlightened buff. When you have the enlightened buff, dunk it into the large plate in the floor to begin forming the bridge. Pass the chalice around after it reaches full charge and continue dunking the enlightened buff into the plate until the bridge forms and then jump down below to begin. The first real encounter is the Lantern Encounter. Your goal is to make your way to the end of a long linear path in the dark underground like in D1. The D2 Lantern Encounter is a little bit different from how it was in D1, I will explain how. The Chalice of Light is right there when you begin and should be picked up. Like before, you'll have a meter on your HUD that slowly begins to charge. And like before, when it's full, you'll have a brief window of time where you can keep holding it, but if a teammate doesn't take the Chalice from you, you will die. So be prepared for a lot of communication and passing the Chalice back and forth during the lantern encounter. When your meter is full and the chalice is taken from you by a teammate, you again get the enlightened buff. The enlightened buff can now be dunked directly into these large lanterns sticking up out of the ground. The reason you want to do that is that activating and standing near the lanterns will gradually remove your weight of darkness debuff, which constantly builds up over time and makes you move very slowly. So dunk enlightened into the lanterns when you can to power them up and remove your debuff, but don't stand near them for too long because once activated, they will eventually explode. Dunking into the lanterns will also extend your engulfed in darkness countdown timer, which if it ever reaches zero, your entire team will die no matter what. A few lanterns will randomly have a small object nearby that looks like that. That tiny little plate or podium or whatever you want to call it will let you dunk the chalice into it and preserve the chalice. Preserving the chalice is important because it will awaken the next lantern on your path, basically making it possible for you to dunk your enlightened buff into it in the first place. The location of these preserved plates won't be the same each time though, it's kind of random, so be sure to keep your eyes open. By the way, after you've reached full charge with the chalice and a teammate takes it away from you, you'll be smacked with a drained of light debuff, which prevents you from being able to take the chalice back from another teammate. Bungie probably did that to prevent just having two people on the fire team passing the chalice back and forth while everybody else on the fire team focuses only on ad clear. As you can imagine, this means you really need to plan ahead for who on the team is going to take the chalice from who. I really recommend setting some kind of vague order before starting of who will take the chalice from who as you hot potato it around the fire team. I also recommend that you come up with clear verbal callouts for when you want a teammate to take the chalice from you, as if they take it too early, you will not get the enlightened buff. Go through the encounter, activating lamps to remove your weight of darkness and preserving the chalice of light in the random tiny plates by the lamps when you find them. Again, make sure you look until you reach the very end. You can eager edge sword skate through parts of the lantern encounter to avoid pen pendulums, but that can lead to a ton of errors like hitting a random thrall that you didn't intend to hit or skating into a big hole in the floor. That was partly the play on the day one contest mode raid, but now that it's over, I feel like it would be much easier to just go through the lantern run normally, just getting your health and staying together and killing things. At the end of the lantern run, you'll preserve the chalice of light in another little podium thingy and then do what you did in the opening encounter, aka take the enlightened buff and dunk it into a big final plate in the floor in order to form a bridge. While while doing this, you'll be swarmed by Hive, including a few unstoppable champions, so make sure someone on your team has something to handle that. A Radiant Well is recommended if your team is having trouble staying alive at the final plate, or now that contest raid mode is over, a Banner of War Strand Titan would do great for the whole team. After dunking the Enlightened buff into the plate multiple times, the bridge will form, at which point you can cross and finish the Lantern Encounter. 
Next up is the bridge encounter, and like the lantern encounter, no boss, but slightly different mechanics than D1. Your goal is still both to form and then get everybody across to the other side of the bridge. There are three plates in the floor on each side of the bridge. The middle plate forms and keeps the bridge up, and unlike in D1 where all you had to do was stand on that middle plate, you now have to do what we've been doing, pass the chalice of light around in order to become enlightened, and then dunk the enlightened buff into that middle plate on the floor until the bridge forms. When the bridge has been built for the first time, one guardian has to stand on the middle plate in order to keep it formed. Leave that middle plate and the bridge will temporarily go away until someone goes back to stand on it again. But to repeat, you only need to dunk enlightened and build the bridge one time. You can't just cross the bridge though, there are only two ways to do it. You either have to be carrying a hive sword like in D1, or you can be carrying the chalice of light. If you don't have either and you attempt to cross the bridge, you will die. The two side plates are the death totem plates. If any guardian is standing on the middle plate to keep the bridge up, you also have to have one guardian on each of the death totem plates on either side, or else they will glow red and blow up and the entire team will wipe. On the other side of the bridge, there are three identical plates just like in D1. However, there's also a little podium like in the lantern encounter, which will let you preserve the chalice of light. More on that in a minute. After killing barrier champions, a sword wielding hive knight will emerge. Anybody can damage and kill the sword wielding hive knight, but you can only pick up that sword if you're enlightened, aka someone has to take the chalice away from you after you hit full charge. If you cross the bridge with a sword and get to the other side, you'll have to kill a special gatekeeper knight, and then you'll have to dunk your sword into a small podium on the floor. Your team will eventually need to dunk five swords on the far end of the bridge to complete this encounter before taking down five more gatekeeper knights at the very end. Here's what I recommend you do. First, pass around the chalice of light on the starting side of the bridge and dunk enlightened into the middle plate until the bridge is built while protecting the death totems, of course. When the bridge is formed, now pass the Chalice of Light again around the entire team until five members of your team are enlightened, one of those five holding a sword, and the final member of your team just picks up the chalice. At that point, have both the chalice holder and the sword wielding guardian cross the bridge together. At the far end, the sword wielder takes on the gatekeeper knight while the chalice holder preserves the chalice into the tiny podium. If nobody else dies, you now don't have to worry about the chalice for the remainder of the bridge encounter. If you don't want to preserve the chalice early, you don't have to, but again, I highly recommend it. Otherwise, you're going to have to play a lot of hot potato during the bridge encounter. Now, you should have two players across the bridge and you can begin sending the other four guardians over one at a time. They should already be enlightened from before, they just need to kill a sword wielding knight, pick up the sword, and cross the bridge. Again, each time a new player crosses the bridge, you'll need to kill a new gatekeeper knight and dunk your sword into the ground where the game tells you to. Once you have three guardians across the bridge, they can now take over on plate duty, aka standing on the middle plate to keep the bridge up, and having one guardian for each death totem plate. When you've done this, the three guardians guardians back on the original side of the bridge can get off their plates and focus on staying alive. Continue having the guardians cross one at a time, and if you're doing the dunk the chalice early strat that I've recommended, have your final guardian who crosses the bridge be maybe a more experienced player as they'll have to stay behind and kill their sword wielding knight alone without dying. When everybody is across the bridge and five swords have been dunked in the floor, five more gatekeeper knights will emerge as well as barrier champs and ogres. Remember, after everyone's across the bridge, you can get off all the plates as you only need to protect the death totem plates if someone is standing on the middle plate to hold the bridge up, which you no longer need to do. Kill all the knights with everyone across the bridge and encounter over. Next up, we have another little mini encounter, not quite the third encounter yet. Let's just call it the hallway. There are green shield doors which your guardian can't go through unless you are enlightened. Pass the chalice around and have your enlightened guardian go through the shield door to kill a shrieker. Killing a shrieker will power down the green shield door so everybody can now get through. It's a very ad dense hallway, but you should honestly be fine. Like in D1, by the way, there is a hidden chest at the very end of this hallway before moving on to the next encounter that you have to get to early before a closing door seals it off forever. If just one guardian makes it through, everybody can get the chest, but if nobody gets it, you miss out on the chest. I don't have footage of the chest though, we weren't fast enough on contest mode because we were trying to not die, but it is there, trust me. Maybe send a Thunder Crash Titan to go get it when the shield doors power down.
Now you're officially at the third major encounter, Ir Yut, who will be your first boss fight in the raid. Your goal is to damage Ir Yut enough to stop her from finishing her death song, which will wipe your entire team if you don't interrupt. Around the area, there are green shield doors, like in the hallway encounter. Again, you can only pass through these if you're enlightened, but don't do that willy-nilly. There are seven shielded rooms you can go into, but some of them are jebates that will F up your run. More on that in a minute. For the first part of this encounter, split your team into two groups groups of three. As you push into the area, one group go left, the other go right. Push up the stairs and slowly fight your way into the main building, killing Hive along the way. Killing both Shriekers will power down the shield doors and let you into the room where the Chalice of Light is waiting for you. Pass around the Chalice like before in order to get the Enlightened buff. With the Enlightened buff, you're looking to go through those shield doors I mentioned earlier in order to find Hive Wizards, which need to be killed in order to kick off DPS phase. But not every shield room contains a wizard. Though, some rooms contain Shriekers. Those are the debate rooms that you want to avoid. There's nothing wrong with killing a Shrieker. It won't kill your team or anything, but after you pass through the shield door, you lose your enlightened buff, meaning if you go into a room looking for a wizard and find a Shrieker, you can't turn around and leave the room without killing the Shrieker. And on top of that, that means you have to go get enlightened again in order to enter another shield room to try and find the wizard that you're looking for. As you can imagine, that wastes a ton of time and after a certain amount of time, Ir Yut will begin singing no matter what. So you only want to go into a room if you know for sure there's a wizard in there not a Shrieker. So how do you tell? Well, if you get really close to a shield room and look on your radar, Shriekers appear as large red circles. And hopefully you can see this, a tiny black triangle either pointing up or down. That'll depend on their elevation relevant to you. Triangle pointing up means a Shrieker is up above you. Triangle below meaning a Shrieker is below you. If there is no big red circle on your radar, that means a wizard is in that room. You can also use Wish Ender to peep into the rooms and use wall hack vision but scouting the radar works just as well. On your first damage phase, you are looking to find three wizards out of a possible seven rooms. On your second damage phase, you're looking for four wizards, and if you need a third damage phase, you'll need to find and kill five wizards. Our team used the following callout system for identifying which room is which room. B stands for balcony, by the way. We assigned one guardian on the team to literally run around and check every shield room during combat while people are passing the chalice to find exactly which rooms had a wizard and then assigned specific players on the team to go to a specific room and kill a specific wizard, AKA, hey Fallout, go kill the wizard in room L2. Hey Anno, go kill the wizard in room R1, etc. I recommend doing this, but if you prefer a more chaotic approach and want each wizard killer to just find their own wizard, by all means do that. Keep in mind though, as soon as one person kills a wizard, Ear Ute will begin singing and the DPS phase officially begins. So I recommend having the wizard killing guard Guardians chip down their health until they're finishable and then waiting for the final wizard killer to give a 3 to 1 countdown for everybody to finish at once. That way, all wizards are finished at the exact same time and everybody can meet up for damage phase at the exact same time rather than some people showing up early and some people showing up late because they killed their wizard late. Again, you can only damage or ute when all the wizards you need to kill have been killed. By the way, as holding the chalice too long will eventually kill you, when enough guardians have been sent out to vanquish the wizards, whoever is holding the chalice at the moment should drop down near where you entered the the outside portion of this encounter and preserve the chalice by dunking it into the little podium in the floor. If for whatever reason there was too much chalice passing and extra guardians have the enlightened buff but didn't use it to go kill a wizard, good news! You can actually use the enlightened buff during the DPS phase. I don't have footage of this because I was a wizard killer, but you can literally walk up to Air Ute and dunk the enlightened buff directly into her for damage, and it's actually pretty respectable damage. For damage phase, I recommend a Well of Radiance, of course, and if you have one, a Divinity and Linear Fusion Rifles. On contest mode, we literally two-phased Ir Ute both times doing this, so it should be even easier now that contest mode is over. But honestly, whatever damage method your team is most comfortable with, rockets, machine guns, it ain't really that deep. I think it's a good idea before starting the Ir Ute encounter that you pick one guardian to scout out the wizard rooms and also to pick dedicated wizard killers as well. If you don't one phaser, just rinse and repeat. Go back and get the chalice from where one of your guardians preserved 
preserved it before the damage phase. Ideally, the first wizard killer should be the one to go get it, while your wizard scout runs around and again looks for which rooms now have wizards. Pass the chalice around to be enlightened, and again, you're now looking for four wizards instead of three, and then after that damage phase, if you need another, five instead of four. Do this until Iryut is finally dead. Now, at long last, the final encounter, Crota. Your goal, of course, is to kill Crota, which works a lot differently than how it did in D1. Let's take it from the top. Stand near the big glowing crystal to begin the encounter and summon Crota. You'll want to stay away from him because he'll really F you up, both up close and at range, and you can't damage him right away. I have a unique strategy where one Titan literally distracts Crota the entire boss fight. If you're interested in that, I'll link the YouTube video down in the description. But that was really more of a thing for contest mode day one, where staying alive was really important and very hard. I don't think you'll need to use that strategy here, but you can if you really want to. A Chalice of Light will appear down in the area we called the pit. As you'd expect, you'll need to pick that up and pass it around to get the enlightened buff like before. However, during the Crota fight, you can only exchange the enlightened buff in certain areas. You'll see a bluish white glowing aura. Both parties need to stand in that aura in order to exchange the chalice. The location of that aura will move around. It can spawn in one of, I think, five or six places total. Just look around the map. That, by the way, will probably be what causes 90% of your team wipes when doing this raid for the first time. There's a lot going on and it's easy to forget that you're holding the chalice, so really be on point with your verbal communication. The large towers on either side of the Oversoul will occasionally spawn two Boomer Knights each who will rain down strong arc on anyone nearby. Killing all four Boomer Knights will spawn two Ogres and one Hive Sword Knight down in the pit. Kill the Sword Bearing Knight in order to grab his sword, which again, you can only do if you are enlightened. And leaving that sword on the ground for too long, it will despawn, so be sure to pick it up relatively soon. In D1, Crota was de-shielded and put in a kneeling position by weapon damage and then damageable via the Hive Sword. In D2, it's reversed. Crota will only be de-shielded by whacking him with a Hive Sword enough and only takes health bar damage via your weapons. You can send sword-wielding guardians to whack down Crota's shield one at a time, but honestly, we found it much more straightforward to send three sword guardians all at the same time. That way, everybody, the whole team, rolls up on Crota all at once and you can begin damage phase with everyone already surrounding him. But use whichever method feels better to you. Like the Iryut encounter, you should be sure to preserve the chalice in the same location, down in the tiny podium near where you entered the throne room. Also, like Iryut, if any guardians wind up with the enlightened buff and have nothing to do with it, you can simply dunk it directly into Crota during the damage phase, which deals good damage. As mentioned, on contest mode, we needed three hive swords and a tractor cannon to de shield Crota in one go. On normal mode, it may take less. I'll try to update the pinned comment if that turns out to be the case. The Hive Sword has unlimited use to kill adds until you either drop it, which again will make it despawn, or until you start whacking Crota, which has a limited timer before the sword goes away. Meaning you can't just keep playing hit and run with Crota to try and de-shield him. When you begin to de-shield him, you gotta commit because you will shortly lose that sword. The sword combo we found that worked for us was light, heavy, super heavy, aka a light swing, a heavy swing, a super swing, which you do by hitting your pop super button, and then another heavy swing. When Crota is de-shielded, now it's time to hit him hard. Radiant Well is a big recommend for easy damage dealing and staying alive as Crota will fight back. Be warned, Crota can break your Radiant Well, so having at least two Radiant Warlocks will probably be a good idea for both staying alive and extra damage output. Just have your extra Warlock on standby to pop the back up well if the first one breaks or runs out. One tractor cannon is borderline mandatory as you'll make Crota take an extra 30% incoming damage and everyone should bring their best close quarter weapons. Lament is a big recommendation, but falling guillotine or any other well rolled sword should be fine. Likewise for the Legend of Acreus. When damaging Crota, keep your eyes peeled on your HUD for the Oversoul timer. Eventually, one guardian who you should pick in advance will need to break away from damaging Crota in order to shoot the 
Oversoul, aka the gigantic glowing green thing in the sky. The Oversoul is incredibly easy to break. If you're close, you can do it with a fusion rifle. If you're far away, just use any weapon with good range to plink down and break the Oversoul. Keep in mind though, breaking the Oversoul will end your damage phase and reshield Crota, so you don't want to do it too early. Try to wait until the timer gets really low, maybe around six or five seconds less if you want to be daring before someone breaks off from the group and damages the Oversoul. After that, rinse and repeat. Go reacquire the chalice from where you preserved it, kill boomers to summon the Sword Knight, and start hoarding swords. Eventually, when you hit the gap in Crota's health bar, you will now activate his final stand mode. Now it's do or die. Right after hitting final stand, try to back up a bit because after a second or two, Crota will blast everyone nearby with area damage. Just wait for the blast to happen and when it is done, run back in and start hitting him again. The Oversoul timer will be there, but you have more time than you think. You're kind of getting jebated by Bungie. When you break the Oversoul during final stand, it will slightly extend the timer giving you the extra few seconds you need to put down Crota. Really make sure you're waiting for the last second to extend the Oversoul timer before committing to putting down Crota for good. Final recommendation other than Radiant Well, by the way, not only does the Titan Pyro Gale exotic do good damage, but the Fire Tornadoes also stun Crota, which is awesome for damage dealing. But make sure you communicate on Chalice Passing and pick your Sword Wielders in advance and you should be just fine. I know there's a Red Border chest puzzle in the raid because I heard about it, but I have haven't done it yet. When I figure out how to do it, I will let you know how that works down in the pinned comment. Likewise, for any other hidden chests or loot drops in the raid. If you have any other tips, let me know down in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on stream.